check it out. We got that Ruhi. Good old friend Ruhi buys a scoop of ice cream in the shape of a sphere. And Ruhi has a very good eyesight. You know, and so he tells you, yo, did you notice that this ice cream has a shape of a sphere with a radius of 3.4 centimeters? And he shows you that the ice cream is served in a cone, okay, and it may be assumed that a fifth of the volume, okay, that looks kind of ugly, so let me go like this, a fifth of the volume, okay, a fifth of the volume of the ice cream is inside the cone. This is shown in the following diagram. So, first things first, what one-fifth is our good old friend Ruhi talking about? They are to talking about the one-fifth of volume, which is hidden right over here, right? Like if you were to finish the sphere, it would look something like this, right? And then there's this one-fifth right there that is inside of the cone. That is what I mean by, by it. That is what it means by it, right? And so the, the remaining four-fifths, which is everything that's kind of like in white, so everything that's kind of like in white is four-fifths of the volume of the ice cream. So that is what's happening when they're talking about the one-fifth volume of the ice cream that is inside of the cone. And so for part A, doop -de -doo, we need to calculate the volume of what thing of the ice cream that is not inside the cone. So fairly simple, but you do have to take a very rigorous approach. So of the things I highlighted, and this is a quick sort of reminder of the approach that I like to suggest. First, identify buzzwords or important uh, words, okay? After that, this is gonna lead you, usually, right? This is gonna lead you to the correct formula and this will lead you to, to the correct procedure, okay? So, once you identify the buzzword and important sort of key concepts of the exercise that I highlighted here, that leads you to a formula and from that formula, you embark upon the procedure and it tends to be pretty obvious. Now, formula, I know you've heard that before, you've heard it in the formula booklet. Ladies and gentlemen, the day of the test, you're walking in with a couple of things. You're walking on with a pen, with a pencil, with, you know, two years of experience of this thing called IB, um, probably a lot of coffee, right? Two years of experience, two hours of sleep, a whole lot of motivation to do well, and da -da -da, your graphing calculator and your formula booklet. Guys, the formula booklet, a very common mistake that people do is that they say, ah, the day of the test, I have all the formulas. Like, ah, I'm good to go. That's not good enough. You need to know what is in it, okay? Why is that important? Because once you start identifying these buzzwords and these important words like cone and sphere, you remember, hmm, I know I've seen that in the formula booklet somewhere. And so you're gonna open up the formula booklet, look for sphere, look for cone, look for volume, okay? And eventually you're gonna find it around there. See? So here, for example, you have da da da. Actually, that is not very useful right now, but I know it's somewhere here. So volume. Here it is. So boom, there you have the volume of a sphere. See? And so suddenly this is the kind of thing that starts giving you the approach that you need, right? So it's not good enough to have the formula booklet. It's very important that you know what's in it. You know, you identify some of these buzzwords like, mm, I've seen that before. I'm pretty sure it's in the formula booklet. See, that is the level I need you to reach. And once you do that, you're going to be just fine. Is that it? So again, back to reality, part A, calculate the volume of the ice cream, right? Now they did tell us that the ice cream is in the shape of a sphere. So really, this is calculate the volume of the sphere. Now, the volume uh, volume for sphere, okay, we checked in the formula booklet, and it's this right there. It's 4 over 3 pi radius cubed. And they tell us that, uh, well, I mean, I said it out loud, but r is the radius. See? Remember that this fancy symbol here is just pi, it's just a number, and you have it in your calculator. So pi is actually right below the clear button, right? So you can push second, and then this little sort of arrow, there you have pi. See, pi is an actual number, don't worry about that. You can leave your answer in terms of pi, by the way. Just so you know, this would be for number eight, right? 
So for number eight, you can see that you can leave your answer in terms of pi. See? Da, da, da. Oh, well, back in my day, you could leave your answer in terms of pi. Maybe not anymore. Maybe times have changed. Times will always change. Anyways, enough blah, blah. We identified the formula. This is what we got to do. All you need to plug in, the only thing you're missing is R for radius. And so what is the radius here? They literally tell you the radius is 3.4 centimeters. So from here, the volume of the sphere, of the sphere, <laughs> of the sphere, you plug in an R equals 3.4. All right. And so if you put all of that into your calculator or just to show the procedure, I suppose. So volume of sphere is 4 over 3 times pi times, uh, whoops, times 3.4 cubed. Okay. Now you want to plug in carefully. So plugging with parentheses tends to help with that. Put all of this into your calculator. So it, it ends up as, for the fraction, you can use alpha y equals. Press the first one. 4 divided by 3 times pi times 3.4 cubed. So bada bim bada boom. The volume of the sphere, okay, is sphere. Ah, dude, I cannot English today. Volume of a sphere equals 164 point 636 guys i'm going to say this right away a common mistake is for you to say ah oh, here's the volume of the sphere here's the volume of the ice cream i'm just going to box in my answer and be done with it there's a small mistake here the small mistake here is that yes we found the volume of the sphere which is the same as the volume of the ice cream but they're looking for the volume of the sphere or the ice cream that is not inside the cone. And so remember, if one fifth, as we mentioned earlier, if one fifth is what's inside the cone, right? So this is one fifth, then everything else, which I'm putting now in, I don't know, pink, right? Then everything else has to be four fifths. I mean, it makes sense, right? If you still don't trust me, you can do one minus four divided by five. Or, sorry, 1 divided by 5, right? You end up with 4 divided by 5, right? It's the remaining part of the ice cream. All right, enough blah, blah, let's get into it. So this is, you can think about it as the total volume of the sphere. If you want to find the volume of the sphere that is not inside the cone, then we're talking about not inside the cone, what I put earlier in pink. So it's if it's 4 fifths, then for finding 4, four fifths of it, right, so for fifths volume of the sphere, all you have to do is take your answer from before and find out what is four fifths of it, quite literally. So you take your answer and you're going to multiply it by four th fifths. Bada bam bada boom, for four fifths of volume of the sphere, or also if you want to, you know, maybe get more fancy, you say uh, volume ice cream outside cone your final answer has to be da, 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 131.708968682 and if you were to consider significant figures because you're a cool kid you count one two three round it up or keep it the same you round it up do not forget your units these are in centimeters, so you would call this centimeters cubed, all right? Checking your answer just so that you believe this guy on the internet. If you do significant figures, it's 132 like it shows there. There are the units, centimeters cubed, and the long answer is 131.708. There's the 0 .708, see? Anyways, enough blah blah. Part A is pretty simple, just got to be organized. And I think it's a good opportunity to explain the procedure that I like to suggest. Identify the buzzwords, go to the formula booklet, or think of a formula, and that is going to be the biggest hint for your procedure. Okay? That's for part A. Then, our good old friend Ruhi takes another good look at the ice cream and say, Wow! Did you realize that the cone has a slant height of 11? And the radius of 3? And that the outside of the cone is covered with chocolate? Man, it would be excellent if they be, Ruhi says, would ask us to calculate the surface area of the cone, 
that is covered with chocolate and give her an answer correct to the nearest centimeters squared. This is fairly simple, but we do have to once again be rigorous in our approach. The first thing I suggest is that if you get new, new information, put it into your diagram, okay? Make it visually appealing, it's going to help you. So, here they talk about a slant height. Okay, so it's the part of the height which is slanted. It has like a little bit of an angle. So this right here, this right here we're gonna call L, which is the slant height, is 11. And they also tell us that the radius, which I will be putting in, I don't know, whatever, in blue, this radius is three centimeters. So of this cone, which is just this figure here, ¿cierto? so this is the figure of the cone, the radius of that guy is right here. Okay? Now, there are two main things they can ask you in terms of geometry or whatever. See? There's two like, there's usually two types of exercises. It's either like a volume exercise or a surface area exercise. Right? Volume is pretty straightforward you can think about like uh, filling up your shape with water that is the big question of how much volume okay for the surface area the example that I like to give which is actually the same one as this exercise is dip it in chocolate how much is covered how much is covered is exactly what they mean by surface area the area of your surface, how much of it gets covered by chocolate. Now in this case, there's a small observation we have to do, see? They tell you that the outside of the cone, the outside of the cone is covered with chocolate, okay? This could have been a cone where it's covered on the outside and also on the inside. See, but in this case, they tell you that only the outside of the cone is covered with chocolate, okay? So, we need to find the surface area of the part of the cone that is covered with chocolate, which is like the curved part of the cone, see? Remember, a cone looks like this, right? Actually, let me make a little bit of a better drawing. A cone looks like that. See, it's just that in this case, it's, well, flipped upside down, but a cone looks something like that, okay? So, a cone has two components. Uh, technically, it has like three. On the one hand, it has this circle down here, see? Which also has a radius, this or that, right? The second thing, yeah? So the second thing, is gonna be that it has a height. And the third thing, the third thing is that it has a slant height. Okay, just so that we understand what we're talking about here, it has the slant height right there, which is the same slant height as right here actually, see? So one thing is the height height, the other thing is the slant height, and it has a circle. Yeah, why does this help? It actually doesn't help for much. I'm just telling you what a cone is some people don't have it clear, so I'd rather clarify it. See, this is a cone. This is a right angled cone because it goes all the way up. See, with a right angle. Yeah. So, by now, you should have heard the word cone like a million times. See, so the biggest buzzwords here are cone and surface area. So, go to your formal booklet and find anything you can related to a cone. You're going to find two things. Look at that. You have two formulas. You have one formula which is for volume of this famous cone and another one that is for, look at that, the area of the curved surface of the cone. Ah, so let me write this somewhere around maybe here. See, so area of curved surface of the cone is big A, right, because that is how they express it, big A equals pi r l equals pi r l I'm gonna put a, a big L here just so that we understand that it's an L okay yeah so area of the curved surface of the cone is pi times r times l do you have I mean what do you need 
you have already have pi because it's in your calculator. Do you have r? So pi we have, right? r, they tell us earlier, is 3. And l, which is for the slant height, ¿cierto? l for the slant height is right there, 11. So, ah, this isn't hard at all. So the area, the surface area, I should say, the area of the curved surface of the cone, so the surface area of that outside part is just going to be this formula here. It's going to be area equals pi times r times slant height l. That's literally it, you guys. See? So for part B, you're going to plug that in. Clearly, you end up with uh, 33 pi, ¿cierto? And what is 33 pi? hundred and three point six seven two so again another small mistake some people can do they say ah so my answer for B is a hundred and three point six seven two centimeters squared because we're talking about surface area easy peasy good to go yeah the small mistake here is that you should always need to read carefully what they're actually asking for so yes they want the surface area of the cone that is covered with chocolate, but they also want it to the nearest centimeter squared. So all you have to do here is evaluate this number, which is to the left of the decimal, and ask yourself, do I round it up or keep it the same? You round it up. So your final answer has to be 104 centimeters squared. A little bit of a longer explanation, but I did want to be very specific on what the procedure is and how you reach it, okay? So the final answer I'm just showing you over here is clearly 104 centimeters squared. Ladies and gentlemen, an exercise that is not that hard, but you do need to visualize it a little bit and just be organized, see? It, it was extremely easy. You literally just had to plug in over here, right? The only but that I would mention is that maybe some people get lost with like, oh dude, I have no idea how to calculate the surface area of a cone. Well, that is why Buzzwords are important. Knowing what's in your formula booklet is important. It's a very easy exercise once you realize, dude, it's in your formula booklet. You just have to plug it in and that's it. See? So guys, keep it in mind, a lot of these exercises become much easier once you start using the formula booklet more. So, use the formula booklet, study with it. Okay? That's the biggest tip I can give you. Ladies and gentlemen, that is for number eight.